So in this video, I'm gonna share with you guys my top 10 favorite new features of One UI 6 ranked. And this will also serve as the first things to do when you get One UI 6. And if you wanna test it out right now, stick around to the end of this video and I'll show you how you can get it, an early version of it to play with. And before we get into the tips, I wanna share with you an Easter egg. Go to settings, scroll all the way to the bottom to about phone, go to software information, and you'll see I'm on One UI 6 and Android version 14. Now, if you tap, keep tapping that, you'll get this page. Now, here's the Easter egg. If you hold your finger down on the symbol in the middle, and now you've unlocked the Android 14 Easter egg and you can fly this little ship around just by holding down and dragging like this. So right now the objective of this game is kind of unknown. If you know what it is, let me know in the comments. Anyway, let's move on to my first favorite feature. So if you pinch anywhere on the home screen now and you go to wallpaper and style and go to the lock screen style, what you can actually do with the clock now is actually move it around with much more freedom. So you can pin it to the left side or the right side and you see all of the little icons underneath stack up under it. You can still customize the style of the text and the colors and things like that. But the big difference now is the ability to have way more freedom to place this where you want it to be on your lock screen to work with whatever wallpaper you've got going on in the background. And something else that's really cool about the wallpapers on the lock screens is that they've made some changes to modes and routines. So you can now have custom clocks and custom wallpapers per mode. But sometimes people ask me about this clock that I have set up here at the top of my home screen. This is actually a weather widget. It's not a clock widget. And there are some upgrades to the weather widgets now. So I'll show you those real quick. Again, we can pinch anywhere on the home screen, go to widgets at the bottom, type in weather at the top. And we have these new dynamic weather widgets and the weather insight widget. And you can see right now, it's actually damn hot here in the UK, which is very rare. But anyway, you can see that Samsung have really worked on improving this app and improving the widgets. And there's a bunch of really useful information right here. So you don't have to go to a third party weather app for all of the information that you need. Okay, number three is the redesign of the now playing widget that appears on your lock screen and also when you swipe down from the top. So when you expand it, it actually shows the album artwork behind the controls. And you'll also notice a kind of visual, I think they call it a visualizer <laughs> of the music playing in the background here, which is really cool. It's a nice effect and it's a nice upgrade to the now playing widget in the background. All right, number four, this is a big improvement in my opinion. When you swipe down the notification shade immediately, you get the brightness control slider here. That wasn't the case before. You have to swipe down twice to get it. And when you do swipe down twice, you'll notice that the quick settings have been completely revamped. So at the top, we have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And I think this is a great change because those are the two most used quick settings that most people need to access. So it does make sense that they're there permanently. And something else that I really like about when you do expand the full quick settings is the fact that you have eye comfort and dark mode, quick toggles there as well, pinned just below it. That's fantastic. And you've also got this smart view and device control if you're in the Samsung ecosystem. And just like before, you can customize the buttons and everything like that if you want, just by hitting the pen. But this is the big upgrade and something I think you should do straight away when you get One UI 6. It is the quick settings, instant access. So to access this, you just swipe down from the top, swipe down again, hit the pen here, and then go to quick settings, instant access. Here, enable this. So this means that now you don't have to swipe down twice. Why put in double the effort to get the same result? And you can still put in double the effort if you want to. You can swipe down from the top and swipe down again. But now with this enabled, you can swipe from the top right corner inwards and you get the full quick settings here in all its glory. In one move, number five, the multi-finger drag. So this works on all of the Samsung apps. So for example, the Samsung Gallery, Samsung Files, Samsung Calendar, Samsung Notes. And this is the basics of it. So let's say, for example, in your photo gallery, you've got some stuff that you want to paste into a PDF. 
what you can do is mark all of the files you want to drag around, hold your finger down on those, and now you can use your other hand to navigate to wherever it is you want to paste them. For example, the Samsung Notes app. And you can see you can fully navigate the phone while keeping your finger on the screen and it's still got those pinned there. And then we can literally just drop it wherever we want within the document. And then for example, you can cut bits out of photos. You can grab an element out of the photo. For example, I'm gonna grab myself out of this photo here and then go back to the Samsung Notes. And drop it in here. So if you have good hand dexterity, you could do this one-handed, but the idea is that you can keep one finger pinned on the screen and still navigate the rest of the device and move back and forwards between the different Samsung apps. And it's important to remember you can save files as PDF here or as Microsoft documents. I do think the Samsung Notes app is definitely underutilized by a lot of people. Anyway, on to the next one, and it is the camera upgrades. And there's some welcomed upgrades here in my opinion. On One UI 5, it's a little bit tricky to change the resolution of the camera. And when you've got the Samsung Galaxy S23 like this, you do have the option to switch between 50 and 200 megapixels on the primary camera. Now I'm betting most people with this phone probably never do that because they don't know how to. Now it's right here at the top and it's much easier to find. Also, you have the ability to switch between the different ratios and there's a bunch of new effects up here at the top as well. So the motion photo, if you wanna create a motion blur, or if you want to add filters to faces or to the overall image. And something else that I really, really like about the camera app now, I always have the grids on by default. If you don't have these on, do this straight away. Go to the settings within the camera app, enable the grid lines. Now, when you do this, this also enables a spirit level for the camera by default. So you'll notice straight away that little dot in the middle lets me know if I'm pointing directly down. But when you tilt the camera upright, you'll also get a regular spirit level, which I don't know if you'll be able to see there. And this will let you line up your photos perfectly with the horizon. And another upgrade that Samsung have made to the camera app is when you're in video mode, you can adjust the resolution up here very easily and you can see what is available, what isn't available as you go through the modes. This is so much easier than before. And you also have steady shot here as well as filters here. And something else that's been upgraded in regards to camera is when you take a photo and it goes to the gallery, you can swipe up on that photo now and you get some suggested things you can do. For example, you can remaster, you can add the portrait effect, or you can use the object eraser straight away without having to go into the edit menu. And with the object eraser, you can erase shadows and reflections as well. So it's a very powerful tool. And then when you hit the pen down here for the proper editor, you can see that Samsung has spent a bit of time streamlining this as well. Those are great additions to the camera app. And there is more upgrades, which I'll do in a separate video. So make sure you subscribe with notifications on. Okay, now let's talk about security and privacy. Now, when you go to your settings, scroll down, go to security and privacy, it will look quite familiar, but there are some upgrades here that I've noticed. For example, if you go to app security, you still got app protection like before in some regions, you'll have McAfee, so you can scan your phone for threats. But there's also a new addition to that menu, which is the Google Play Protect. You can also scan using this. So if you don't have McAfee, you can use the Google Play Protect scan to check if anything dodgy is going on on your phone. But that's not what I wanted to show you here. Check this one out. When you scroll down, there's a new section here called privacy. And when you tap on this, you can see what has been accessed on your phone in the last 24 hours. So if you are concerned about security and things like that on your Samsung device, you have full transparency on everything that's happening. So you can see what is accessed what. And if you go to here at the top, you can see what apps have accessed what? This is such a great way of visualizing what's actually going on on your phone on a regular basis. So if you are security conscious, you're really gonna appreciate this upgrade. And this is a really nice addition. When you pinch the home screen anywhere, you go to widgets, there's a new custom camera widget. And I think a good use case for this could be if you're going on holiday, you can set up a widget for your camera. And here you can title the widget, so let's call it holiday. You can choose what mode you want it to start up when you tap the widget. So you can go straight to your selfie camera or your rear camera. You can even go straight into the pro mode or pro video. So you can be very specific 
with what you want. And more importantly is when you use this widget to fire up the camera, you can save the pictures and videos into a very specific folder. So you can call that folder holiday 2023, and then it's all nicely organized into one batch of photos and videos for you to access later on. This is a fantastic addition and you should definitely be using this on day one when you get One UI 6. Okay, for me, one of the greatest upgrades that One UI 6 brings to the table is the video editor. It's so much better now and it's perfect for creating short form content on the device instead of in an app. Check this out. So here's your video within the gallery. If you hit the pen at the bottom here, you'll see you have more refined tools Let's say you're creating a video for TikTok and you want to add music to the background. You can hit the little speaker icon here and you can add background music. There's a bunch of different ones you can download. You can use music just locally on your device as well. So if you have MP3s on your device, you've got different categories of music here and you can download all of Samsung's gallery if you want. But if you hit the plus in the top right corner, you can actually add more tracks as well. That's my uh, notification <laughs> chime <laughs> that I use. Also here, you can create stickers, draw on the image, add text and change the types of text and add backgrounds to it and stuff like that as well, just like you can on TikTok's editor. And one of the greatest things about Samsung devices in general is the ability to create stickers. And you can do that with the S Pen pretty much anywhere on the internet. You can grab things off the internet and paste them straight into your videos. And now Samsung actually let you draw on top of existing stickers as well. So you can get really creative with this editor. So this has been my top 10 favorite new features of One UI 6. There might be more by the time the official release comes out. So make sure you subscribe with notifications on for my follow-up videos on One UI 6. And if you just subscribed, you've just joined me in my mission to conquer the galaxy. See you in the next one. Don't be late.